Hi guys, welcome back to ABOC Studio. You are here with Natalie, and today I will share with you a fun and easy crochet pattern, the ear flap hat. In this video, it's a step-by-step -step tutorial with in-depth instructions. So if you are a beginner, I hope you will find it informative and easy to follow. We're gonna use thick yarn and a big hook so the project would work up quickly. You can finish one of these hats in just a couple of hours. Now let's start with tools and material. For this project, we're gonna use double stranded DK yarn. And that just means that you put two balls of yarn next to each other, then put the strands together like this, and then you just work as if they are one strands of yarn. These two balls of yarn was the same big ball like this one. I will go ahead and treat this ball the same way. I just leave it like this so that you get the idea, alright? Of course, you can always buy two balls of yarn and put the strands together and work right away. By doing that, you won't have to roll up or separate them into two. But if I buy two of this big ball, that would be way too much yarn. So. This is for the best. Now how much yarn do we need? You'll need about 200 to 350 grams of yarn. It depends on the size of your hat. The bigger it is, the more yarn you need. And that it's all you need to know if the hat you are making is same color from top to bottom, like this one. But if you want it to have two sections of color like this one, which what I will do with these yarns, Calculate the color, it's really easy. You just have to divide the total amount of yarn for your size into two equal parts and each part would be each color section and that's all. Okay, you can see here that I put two different colors of yarn together and that's what I like about double stranded because you can be so creative creating so many interesting color palettes. So that's one of the benefits. In case you don't want to work with double stranded yarn, you want to crochet with normal single strand you can always find chunky or super chunky yarn and with that yarn weight you can just have the same recommended hook which i will talk about later right after this you can follow the same size instruction of the pattern all right these are the tools we will need for this project the most important is the six millimeter crochet hook scissors yarn needle to weave our ends in and we will need five stitch markers. I use bobby pin here because I find them so much more convenient than their regular stitch markers. First, we're gonna start with a number of chain and this number depends on what size you're working on, so please follow the size instruction on the screen. To make chain first, we need a slip knot, and it is very simple. You will hold your yarn like this. This is the tail of your yarn, and this is your working yarn. You're gonna put your working yarn on the tail to form a loop like that. And then again with your working yarn, you put it into the loop from the behind and pull out another loop. And then we just close tight and that is our slip knot. You can pull this working yarn to adjust the size of your knot. Now I like to make it quick and I will show you a quicker way to do it. You hold your yarn like this, make a loop with two of your finger and then with this finger you pull the working yarn through that loop and that's it. That is your slip knot. We're gonna put this slip knot on our hook and close it. Now keep in mind that for this pattern, we will need our chain loops to be a little bit loose. So you don't want to close the slip knot too tight. You want a little bit of space like that so that your chain will be nice and loose. To make chain, you simply yarn over and pull through. Every time you yarn over and pull through, you make a chain loop and that is our first chain. Again, for the second chain, Remember that you want your chain loop to be a little loose, so you loosen it up a little bit, just a little bit like so, alright? Then yarn over and pull through, okay? Now again, loosen up your chain loop a little bit, yarn over and pull through. You can see that we now have three chains. 
We're going to repeat the same process until we have our number of chains according to our size instruction. Once we have our chain, we're going to go ahead and join this chain into a round so that we can crochet in the round. Now, first you want to put this working yarn above and away from your hook and from the chain, like so, alright? You will see that your chain has two sides, the right side with a chain shape like little v, and then the wrong side has little bumps on each chain. To join this chain into the round, I will demonstrate it with a little piece of paper so that it's easier for you to imagine. Let's say that this side of the paper is the wrong side with little bumps on each chain, okay? This wrong side, alright? You're gonna hold on one end and find the back of the chain all face up until the other end and put two ends together and join them right here and there you have your chain in the perfect round. Now you don't want to skip this part and randomly join your chain because your chain is very long and there's a high chance that your chain will be twisted after you join it like, like this. And there's no good working in a twisted round like this. The same here, put this working yarn above and away like so, then find the back of the chain like this. Hold on to this end and find the back of the chain all face up. Hold away until the end and here you will bring this end to the front and this is where we want to join our chain into the round. Pick up your working yarn and now to join your chain in a round we're going to use a slip stitch. You will see here that your chain shape like little v this is the top loop of the V and this is the back loop of the V. You want to insert your hook right under that top loop. Like so. Now you're going to yarn over with your working yarn. And pull this yarn over. And pull this loop that you just yarn over through both loops on your hook. And that's how you join your chain into the round with a slip stitch. From here, we're going to start working our first row and you will see in the written pattern that we will need a chain 2. So you chain 2, 1 and 2. For this chain 2, we don't need to loose up our chain loop, so just work it with a normal tension, alright? Now we're going to work our first double crochet into the next chain. You'll see that our first chain is where we slip stitch to join the round. Now this is the next chain, so we're going to insert our hook under the top loop of this next chain for our first double crochet. For double crochet, first you're gonna yarn over. You can see that now you have kind of like two loops on your hook. You insert your hook into the next chain under the top loop, like so. You can see that now you have three loops on your hook. With your working yarn, you're gonna yarn over and pull a loop out of this chain. Again, you will see that you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over. Pull through two loops, two of these loops. See that now we have two loops, yarn over and pull through two last loop to be back with one loop. And that is our first double crochet. Now the next one into the next chain. Yarn over, insert your hook into the next chain, draw our loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. All right. Again, into the next chain, yarn over, insert your hook, draw our loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And here you go, we have three double crochet and this chain two. All right, and we're gonna keep repeating the same process again and again until the end of this round, when you get here, when you have about two chain left to work in, and I will meet you that right there to show you what to do next.
I'm at the end of my first row and you can see here that I have two chain left to work in one and two I'll go ahead and do that this one and this one this last one all right okay to finish our first row we're gonna join the first row into a round just like how we did with the chain again with a slip stitch and you will see right here this is your first double crochet this is chain 2 and this is the first double crochet on top of that double crochet you will see this V and that is where you want to insert your hook for the slip stitch all right insert your hook under that V on top of your first double crochet like so and for slip stitch we're gonna yarn over and pull through all the loops on our hook to be back with one loop and now you will want to close your slip stitch and this is a very important part okay you're gonna hold on to the loop on your hook and your piece and just pull it really tight and that's how you close the slip stitch to finish this round we're gonna again work a chain two and then turn our work for our next row so you turn your work from the right to the left from here we're gonna start our second row by working double crochet into each stitch you will see here this is your double crochet and on top of it there's this V and that's where you want to insert your hook all right now double crochet yarn over insert your hook right under the V take both loops of the V all right draw a loop yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and you'll see that this is our first double crochet of the second round now we're going to repeat the same process work double crochet into each stitch across until the end and i will meet you right here at the end when we have two stitches left to show you what to do next You can see here that I'm at the end of my second row and I have three stitches left to work in and I'm going to finish that now again we're gonna finish this second round by joining it with a slip stitch and you see here this is your first double crochet stitch of the round you insert your hook right under the V on top of it next to this chain 2 then yarn over and draw that yarn over loop through both loops on your hook and then we're gonna close our slip stitch before moving on to the next row we're gonna chain two and turn our work follow the pattern we're gonna work double crochet into each stitch across until the end of the round and the pattern will be the same for the next few rows so please follow the written pattern that I put on the screen for you all right I'm working on a size small so here at the three rounds is where I want to switch color and I will show you how to do that if you don't want your hat to have two color section you can just skip this part I'm at the end of this round before I want to switch my color I'm gonna finish this last stitch then I will join this round with a slip stitch as usual I will close it up all right now here is where you take your new color you want to take the other color and insert it into this loop like so all right and then here you will pull on this previous color and close it you're gonna take your scissors and cut off your previous color then you're gonna tie this two tails together 
like so and start working with our new yarn now you pull on this and we're gonna finish the round with a chain two as usual turn our work and work double crochet into each stitch across just the same way as we did before and there won't be anything new so please follow the written pattern that I put on the screen for you You can see that I am here at the end of this row before I start my crown decrease and we're gonna mark our decrease stitches before we finish the round with a slip stitch to join around and a chain two, right? If you accidentally did join the round with a slip stitch and you chain two, all you need to do is pull your yarn out to come back to to your last stitch like so so you want to finish the last stitch here and now I will show you how to do our crown decrease all right I'm working a size small so here I have five rounds before I do my crown decrease but if you're making another side the number will be different all right to mark our crown decrease we we'll first um, loosen this loop of the last stitch I think that's enough to be safe right now you're gonna put the first um, the chain two and the last stitch together and fold the piece like this all right this is where we're gonna use our um, five stitch marker to mark five degrees and so the first the first stitch we want to mark would be right here in the middle to separate the piece into two equal parts okay so Whichever stitch right here in this corner, you want to mark it. It's the V on top of the stitch. So we're going to mark it right there, right under the V. Now next, we're going to mark two stitches on each of this side, all right? So first, let's start with this side. You want to use your eyes and try to use this two stitch marker to mark um, this side into three equal parts. You don't have to count the stitches. It doesn't have to be the exact equal numbers. So I'm first gonna put it here. We just have to estimate it, right? And maybe here. Remember to mark the V on top of the stitch, all right? Now we're gonna check one more time. You see that they are fairly equal, right? They don't have to have the same number of stitches um, on each of these parts. This is already good enough. Now the other side would be a bit easier where we gonna, we gonna look for the other side and mark this stitch in the same position. You can see here, I will mark this stitch. And with this one, I mark this stitch. Now that we've done marking our decrease stitches, we can move on to our first row of crown decrease. Repeat the same process of joining the round with a slip stitch. Close the slip stitch. Remember to close your slip stitch, all right? Chain two and turn our work. Now on our next row, you will see that we will skip we will decrease six stitches by skipping five mark stitch and our last stitch of the round. So five mark stitches and one last stitch. That is six decrease stitches. All right. So I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really simple. We're going to start double crochet into each stitch across the same way we did before until we get to our first marked stitch and I will show you what to do there. Okay, you can see that I have one stitch away from my marked stitch. I'm gonna do this. 
and with our mark stitch we're going to decrease it by skipping it so we're not going to work in our mark stitch and move right on to the stitch right next to it so here you go and we're going to repeat the same process we're going to double crochet all the way until we meet the mark stitch again and we're going to skip it and i'm going to show you one more time now again when we get to our mark stitch we will skip it and work into the stitch right next to it all right and the process will be just the same i will meet you right at the end of this round right here when we pass this last mark stitch somewhere here and to show you how to skip the last stitch you can see that I'm closer to the end of this round and I have three stitches left to work in but you can see in the pattern that we will skip our last stitch so we're gonna work in this two stitches and skip this last stitch we're not gonna work in there right so there you go that's it now before we slip stitch to close the round and move on to our next round we will have to again mark our decrease stitches for the next row so you want to loosen the loop on your hook and again you're gonna put this last stitch and this chain two together like so we're gonna put all this previous mark stitch out Put the stitches together and we're gonna find the stitches right in this corner to separate the rounds into two equal parts like so now again just how i showed you before we're gonna need to mark this side of the round into three equal parts and we're gonna estimate it we don't need to count the stitches to get the exact number we just have to use our eyes to estimate the place where we mark all right so this is this look good enough i'm i'm gonna turn to the other side and do the same thing using the one that i mark here all right now here there we go now we can join the round and move to our next round remember that we skipped the last stitch so we're gonna join our round right away insert your hook in the last stitch draw our loop draw the loop through the loop on your hook close your slip stitch and chain two turn our work and we're gonna repeat the same process work double crochet into each stitch across we're gonna skip mark stitch and last stitch the process will be just the same for the few next row and what you will see is that after each row um, your piece will got smaller and smaller creating the crown of the hat you will also see that the top hole of the crown will get smaller and smaller and I will meet you right there when you see your mark stitch about three to four stitches away from each other to show you what to do next can see here that our crown got smaller and smaller I will go ahead and attempt marking our crown decrease one more time it kind of look like a little weird right now but you can just reshape it and when you put it on your head it will be fine all right now again mark our decrease stitches Remember that we just have to estimate it with our eye. We don't need the exact same stitches on each part, all right? And that is fairly good enough. Turn to the other side and 
do the same thing. Oh, where is the other one? Okay, right here. And you will see that your marker get closer and closer together. Here they are only three stitches away from each other. So we're gonna keep doing this until we see that they are only about two stitches away from each other. So we skip our last stitch, join the round, chain two, turn our work and repeat the same process until the end of the round and I'll meet you right there to show you what we're gonna do next. Alright, here I work this one and again we will skip this last stitch alright so we will loosen our loop to see should we go for another round we put the stitches first stitch and last stitch together and you will see that this crown hole is already fairly small Now when you try to mark your decrease stitches, you will see that they are only about two stitches away from each other. That's where you know that you want to stop and bind off. So we're gonna stop right here and finish our round with a slip stitch. Skip the last stitch, finish our round with a slip stitch as usual. Close the slip stitch, chain one, and cut to bind off. You want to leave a long tail so that we can use that tail to close the hold on your crown, okay? Now I will show you how to close this hold up. We're gonna use our yarn needle and put one of the strands in the yarn needle. If you are working single-stranded, you will want to mark this stitch so that when you, after you go around, you know where to stop. But because we have two strands, we will, know, we will always know when we finish the circle. So here you don't need it. Put one of the strands in the needle and we're gonna start going stitch to stitch to close this um, hold. You're gonna first insert your hook into the V right next to it, right there, you see? And at the same time, you will pull your needle out of the V right next to it, like so. Pull all the way out. Now, put the needle in the next V and out of the V next to it. Put your needle in the next V and the V right next to it. We're gonna repeat that all the way until we finish the circle. Again and again. Until the end of the round. Okay. Here when you get closer to where you mark or the other strands, you want to put your needle into the first stitch, right there, alright? And now all you need to do is pull on that yarn to close the hold up really tight and you want to tie these two strands together. If your strand is single stranded, you will have to make like um, um, like a knot, like so. But because we have two strands, we can just tie them together two times. All right, now we will weave these ends back into the piece later. 
Now you want to stretch your piece out a little bit. Moving on, I will show you how to do the ear flap. For our ear flap, we're going to first need to fold our hat in the right way. You're going to find the tail of your yarn where you started the chain and put it into a corner and flatten up your hat. This tail part, this whole part will become the back of our hat. Then you're going to need a piece of paper like this. You can use any kind of piece of paper that it's big enough to for you to put your hat on like this. If it's too small, we're going to put it like this. And you're going to need your pen. You can use any kind of paper like a um, newspaper with a marker that would work too. And then you hold on your hat and mark the bottom of your hat like this. When you put your hat away, it will look something like this. Now what we're gonna do is estimate the middle of this whole line. So we just stick like this. That looks that looks fair enough, right? Then you will go ahead and again separate this line, this part of the line into two equal parts. Like so, maybe here, okay? And and again mark this into two, two, here the same, okay, that it's okay. So now you will see that you have eight equal parts and this is the back of your hat. This is the front of your hat. For the front, you will need two parts and for the back, you will need one part and this part will be your ear. Okay, so now we'll put, you put your back back on the paper and you will see the back of your hat is where your tail is. Put it right there and this will be the front of your hat. Take your, take two of your stitch marker and remember this is your ear, right? So we will mark a stitch right here. Find your stitch and mark the two loop right under the stitch. It's going to be a little bit different than the double crochet stitch because this bottom of your hat is the chain. It's not the top of the double crochet, but it's the foot of the double crochet, which is the chain. So you can just find the two loops right under your double crochet. Mark it right there. And here, your ear, this is where you want to mark this stitch. Find the foot of it, take two loops, mark it right there. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna count the number of stitches in the mark area. So starting from this stitch, you will count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. This number will be different between the sizes of the hat or the material you're using. Your can be a different number. It doesn't have to be 17 stitches. Another thing to keep in mind is that this number should be an odd number. So right now my is 17, so that's fine. But in case you end up with an even number like 16 or 18 or whichever even number it is, you will want to change that into an odd number by adding one more stitch or, or subtracting one, one stitch. Let's say that this one is your 18th stitch or 16th stitch. You want to move one stitch back or one stitch forward. That's your choice. You just need to move back or move forward one stitch so that you get the odd number. And then you want to write down that odd number. Mine is 17. So I'm going to write that down. We're going to repeat the same things to the other side. Make sure that you keep the hat in the same shape like this. 
flip it and this one is going to be easier you just going to mark your stitch depends on the other side so your stitch is right here it's going to be this one this is the ear on the other side all right and it's going to be here here this one okay and just to make sure you will have to count the stitches between this mark stitch make sure that it's the same stitches on the other side so mine is 17 i will need the same 17 i will count it 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 and 17 it is the same without even trying so it's good enough but if it's not the same maybe it's one to two stitches more or less you'll want to move this stitch marker around this one a little bit or this one a little bit it's up to you so that you get the right number of stitches now that we finish marking our ear we're going to start with joining the new yarn to crochet the ear we're going to put this paper away now remember you always want to join your yarn to the stitch that it's closer to the back of the hat which is where the tails comes from so you want to put your yarn right here where you mark it the mark that closer to the tail put it right there and then you want to tie it leave a long tail so that you can weave in later for the first and the last stitch you will want to insert your hook into the double crochet stitch here all right not here you can insert your hook here but it will leave a big gap right there so for the first and the last stitch you want to insert your hook right into the double crochet stitch you see here is the double crochet stitch and you want to insert it in the middle of the stitch all right you're going to draw our loop with your new yarn like so and we're going to do a chain two then we're going to double crochet into each stitch across until this mark stitch and you will see that we will work in the foot of the stitch which is the foundation chain so it's going to be a little bit different than the top of the stitch you will find you will insert your hook right under the foot of the stitch right here so a double crochet in there next here this one okay and this one again this one find the stitch and insert it in the foot of the stitch the space right under the stitch this one all the way until the end and i will meet you right here when you're closer to this mark stitch to show you what to do all right you can see here that i have two stitches away from my mark stitch and again i will find the bottom of the stitch right there be careful because the foundation chain is a bit loose be careful not to work two stitches in one space all right find the bottom of your stitch a double crochet in there this next one right there and here for the last stitch remember um just like the first stitch instead of insert your hook right there under the stitch you want to go into the stitch so yarn over insert your hook in the double crochet stitch draw our loop and finish your double crochet i recommend you to count the stitches just to make sure that you have the right number of stitches and you will need to count this um chain two as one stitch so whichever the number of stitches between your mark stitch right here whatever number you write down you should have the same number of stitches on this first row so counting everything including this chain two in the beginning 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. Right, so might it's the right number. If your it's not the right number, you should go back to see if you accidentally increase or skip any stitches to get the right number of stitches. Now moving on to our next row, you're gonna chain two. Turn your work. And for the next row, you will see in the reading pattern that we will double crochet into the third stitch. So first stitch, second stitch, and third stitch. The reason why we will first working in the third stitch, it's because first of all, for double crochet on a flat surface, we're never gonna work in the first stitch. We already have this chain two that count as a stitch. So this first stitch has this chain two. Normally we will start by working double crochet in the second stitch. But for this ear, we want to create the triangle shape for the ear. We will need to decrease one stitch at the beginning and at the end of each row. So what we do when we work in the third stitch is that we skip one stitch, which is this second stitch. Now that is just for those of you who wonder why we work in third stitch. You actually don't need to understand it. All you need to do is start double crocheting in the third stitch. So double crochet. And then we're going to keep double crocheting into each stitch across all the way until the end. And I'll meet you right there to show you what to do next, all right? All right, you can see that I have three stitches left, which is two double crochet and this chain two, one, two, three. As I told you before, normally we will count this chain two as a stitch. And if you want to keep the same number of stitches on each row, you will have to work another double crochet in there. But because for the ear, we're trying to decrease one stitch in the beginning and one stitch at the end of each row to create the triangle shape, we're not gonna work in the chain two. And that means we decrease one stitch when we skip this chain two, all right? So we work in this two last double crochet and we're not gonna do anything with the chain two. So double crochet in here, double crochet in this stitch. And just leave this chain two like so. We don't need to do anything about it, all right? Now, in the end of each row with this pattern, working in the third stitch and each stitch across, skip the chain two, we'll have two stitches left after each row. So say that my first row has 17 stitches, my second row will be left with 15 stitches, and the next row will be left with 13 stitches and so on. You can keep that in mind to keep the right numbers of stitches after each row. Now, we're gonna keep repeating that same process. I will leave the reading pattern on the screen for you and keep repeating the same pattern until you are left with 11 stitches on the row and I will meet you right there to show you what to do next. Okay, so you see here that I have one stitches left, I will work in there. Leave my chain two like so, and you can count again to check your number of stitches. We will need to count this chain two as one stitch array, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right? Once you're left with eleven stitches, a pattern will chain a little bit. First you chain two and turn your work. And you will see in the pattern that will, you will do the same thing in the beginning. Work double crochet into the third stitch. And then you're gonna double crochet into the two next stitch. So one, two. All right, you see now we have four stitches with a chain two. One, two, three, four. Then we're gonna skip the next stitch, which is this one and work in the stitch right next to it. And double crochet across until the end, skip the chain two, as usual. There you go. You will see that we will left with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight stitches. Now for our next, we're gonna do pretty much the same thing. You double crochet into the third stitch, 
double crochet for one more stitch skip the next stitch and work in the next the stitch right next to it like so work in the last double crochet stitch skip the chain two then you're gonna chain two and turn your work now here you will see that we have five stitches left one two three four five all right what we're gonna do is that double crochet into the third stitch and this stitch right next to the chain two all right you will see that you are left with three stitches so now you will chain one turn your work and do a single crochet into this middle stitch right here all right for a single crochet you don't have to yarn over you insert your hook into that middle stitch draw our loop to have two loops on your hook yarn over and pull through and that's one single crochet now before we bind off, we will need a number of chain to have the um, tie string. So it's very simple, you just keep chaining until you have a long enough string. Alright, so I end up made uh, 60 chain and that's long enough for me now I will show you how to bind off you cut we don't need a long tail here right so you just cut it pull the chain out and tie it you want to really secure it then you can cut really close to the knot and that's it we made one ear of the hat this is how it should look like and we're gonna go ahead you can stretch the piece out a little bit so that they look nicer okay okay now we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on this side of the hat remember that you want to insert your yarn in the mark stitch that it's closer to the tail of your hat this one okay not this one this is how everything should look like once you finish both ears so here it is We almost finished. There's only one last thing to do is to weaving our ends in. And this is one of the very important parts. If you don't weave your ends in and cut it right off, your piece will unravel by itself. It will leave a big hole on your piece and that's not what we want. So I'm gonna show you the proper way to weave our ends in. Let's start with this one away. Okay? You can put two strands together and put it in your needle. Um, you want to weave your ends in the fabric with the same color. Now the trick is not to go in a straight line, but go all the way up and down right to the left. So first let's put it here. All right. Then go up a little. Then you can go to the other side, okay, and then go down again, and then go like so, and that's it. Just don't go in a straight line, then you, after you weave your ends in, you stretch the piece out a little bit to reposition the tail. And then you can just cut it off like so and everything will be nice and safe you're gonna repeat the same things to all of these ends and that's it I will show you how to put the pom-poms on your hat I made a separate video of how to make this quick and easy pom-pom so you can find the link to that video in the description 
Your pom poms will have two long tails like this, and you will need your hook. You're gonna find the top of your hat, this hole right here, and put your hook right next to it. Put your hook in like this, put one of the strands in, pull it into the wrong side of your hat, then another one on the opposite side, like so. Now, you will want to tie this from the inside. Two knots so that they stay well together. If you want your pom-poms to be removable, you can do like a bow tight, like so. And you can take it off anytime you want. And that's it.